Tonight, safety concerns as vandals target Simic Mining's wireless rail line. And power prices to drop under new plans from the National Energy Regulator. With the latest from around the region, your nightly news with John Hunt begins now. Good evening. Simek Mining is once again battling against vandalism on its rail network. Staff say the unnecessary and costly repairs are putting local lives at risk. Shari Hams has more. Simek Energy says these fences are continuously being repaired with vandals cutting holes in the lines along the Arthur Glenny Drive overpass and near Hummock Hill. Unfortunately, it's happened for so many times over the years. It's actually a regular occurrence. It happens to us every week and we're required to come out and attend to it and stop our rail lines whilst we investigate even possible damage. The vandalism costing Simec Energy thousands of dollars in damages every year. They say the fences are crucial in preventing fatal interactions with moving trains. Across Australia, 35 people lose their lives by going onto railway lines and being hit by trains. We don't want any of the Wyala residents or community members being killed by this and becoming another statistic. Simec Energy say they'll combat the issue with a high security presence in the area. We've increased patrols around the area and surveillance and we're asking for the public to help us and to advise police. And they're warning residents to think before they act get one chance at this. These trains carry our iron ore down the line. They have big heavy machinery and they won't be able to stop in time if you're on the line. Anyone that may have seen suspicious activity in the area or has information on the vandalism is urged to contact Crime Stoppers. Police are calling on the Wyala community to help identify a suspect involved in a break-in on Saturday night around 11.50. Police say a man gained entry to an art centre on Nicholson Avenue by smashing a window and have released this image in a bid to identify the suspect. Police are hoping that the CCTV is clear enough that someone in the community will recognise this person and contact us. Anyone with information is urged to contact Crime Stoppers on 1800 000. The Australian Energy Regulator has moved to slash South Australian power prices from next year. Households will save over $60 a year, but some are unsure if it will make a big difference. Power bills set to be slashed and many say the move is long overdue. Would you welcome that? Oh, would I ever, yeah. <laughs> Anything to save a quid. The energy regulator releasing a draft plan limiting the amount of revenue SA Power Networks can recover from customers over the next five years. I know people are going without using their heaters and that, without using their air conditioners and everything. It's ridiculous that we've got to that stage. The proposal would see SA Power Networks collect an estimated $3.9 billion until 2025, 309 million less than the company had proposed, meaning residents will save $63 a year from next year, while the bills of small businesses will be cut by nearly $300. I would certainly welcome it, but probably won't be very much anyway. Network charges are also set to only rise in line with inflation. The state government is supportive but wants to see more cost cutting. It's only one component of the price reductions that we're looking for, um, but every part counts. SA Power Networks will have until December to consider the decision and submit a revised proposal before the regulator makes a decision early next year. Garth Burley, 7 Spencer Gulf News. Port Lincoln Police have met with town officials to address community concerns over a recent spate of crimes. Police will increase foot patrols around popular areas of the town, including the foreshore and shopping centres. A peaceful march on the issue will be held outside the police station this Saturday. The CFS are preparing for a dangerous bushfire season, urging locals to also get ready. Farmers are also encouraged to get involved, with a farm fire unit handbook now available. Bushfire season is fast approaching and the CFS are preparing for a dry and dangerous summer. Across the board we've seen a drier than unusual winter, so that's led to not a lot of fuel growth, but of course our scrub and native vegetation is much drier than we would normally expect. The farm fire unit is gearing up for the season across our region. They're encouraging farmers to start clearing their land. Fire unit is a vehicle that's been equipped with the means to be able to suppress a fire at its early stage of outbreak or support our firefighting operations. 
A farm fire unit handbook is also available for locals. About that, if they make contact with their local CFS group or brigade, they'll be able to point them in the right direction. Farmers are also being encouraged to take precautions when working in the hot temperatures. Extreme heat, it's uh, quite dangerous for people to be out and be very physical unless they're prepared for that uh, and to always be trying to seek shade, not work in the, the hottest part of the day. Thunderstorms are also on emergency services radar. You'll actually get some storm related tasks where you get those severe thunderstorms that come through and through the extreme heat you will get gum trees that like to drop branches from time to time as well. Emergency services urging residents to be ready. We need to be able to actually get in to be able to support them. We need to have full access through their gates, around their homes. Shari Hams, 7 Spencer Gulf News. Still to come tonight, Broken Hill to host a skating workshop tomorrow. And a new school focusing on hands-on learning opens in Port Lincoln. Welcome back. Broken Hill's younger generations are being invited to a skateboarding workshop tomorrow at Sturt Park. The local YMCA is partnering with Headspace for the event. A chance to try something new. Tomorrow a team from Totem Skateboarding in Sydney will hold a series of classes teaching the city's youth to skate. The Landing Bolts Broken Hill Workshop is open to 12 to 25 year olds. Yeah, I'm so excited to learn some skateboarding tricks and skills, to hang out with my friends, listening to some good music from local artists. The free event will be held in Sturt Park from 10 o'clock tomorrow morning, featuring beginner and intermediate sessions. The YMCA says it's not just about picking up a new sport, the team from Headspace will also be part of the day. There's also a mental health perspective to this as well. So there'll be a talk and the Headspace crew will all be here, um, as long, uh, along with all the YMCA people too. Phil Kicker is coming down to do a mental health talk and he's going to talk about his experience and how physical health has been a really important part of looking after his mental health. A skate jam will cap off the day with a professional set to show off some advanced tricks. And if you or someone you know needs help, call Lifeline on 13 11 14. Patrick Reinke, 7 Spencer Gulf News. Construction has begun on a $220 million estate in Wallaroo. When completed, Wallaroo Shores is set to house a four-star resort run by the Mantra Group. Built over the next 10 years, it will house a bistro, cinema and banqueting facilities for up to 150 people. The estate will also include house and land packages, retail and commercial facilities. A new University of Adelaide scholarship is set to strike the right chord with regional musicians. The Elder Conservatorium of Music Regional Program will give rural musicians a chance to study with some of the best in the country. Funding will help students and teachers travel between Adelaide and the Eyre Peninsula for music lessons. You do not need to even have had one lesson of music it's from beginners through to people with Grade 5, Amy B and beyond. For more information, visit the university's website. Upper Spencer Gulf Health providers gathered in Port Augusta today to help connect people with NDIS services. Organisers say many locals needing support have no idea what's available. Ten service providers, Bush Tucker, and plenty of information to link people with the NDIS. And that linkage comes about as a result of community engagement and community awareness. Organised by Aboriginal support bodies, the event at Pikawea today, helping connect all ages of the Indigenous community with valuable health services. They say that, you know, they have this health condition, but they don't know what to do. So I'm there to help them. Health workers say they've noticed a rise in the number of clients using their service in the last few years off the back of improved education on the ground. Some of our people, they don't understand and they don't, they don't know that there's services out there for them. Coordinator Charles Jackson hopes offering a plethora of information will encourage more people to reach out for NDIS assistance. It's not a, it's not a shame job to, uh, for anybody to have some form of disability. The overall goal to improve the health outcomes for Indigenous Australians. Garth Burley, 7 Spencer Gulf News. 
Air Peninsula's first Steiner School is ready to go in Port Lincoln, with the first playgroup session set for later this month. The school focusing on creativity and practical skills. Educating students through nature by getting your hands down and dirty. It's a new way of learning in Port Lincoln as part of the proposed She Oak Steiner School. It's very play-based learning, um, really strongly connected with the natural environment and the seasons. The school system focuses on engaging work, whether that's baking some bread or attending to the garden. I like growing vegetables and fruit. What we're hoping to do is to allow parents and children to come together in a safe place that nurtures their soul and spirit. So while it's peaceful now, this fairy tale garden is ready to spring to life. It'll soon be transformed into an outdoor classroom, ready for more than a dozen students. I enjoy coming here because it's really peaceful and I feel like it's important that we, we still stay close with nature and not on our phones all day. The proposed school would become the first of its kind in regional South Australia. Organisers hope to enrol students by early next year. Nathan Regter, Seven Spencer Golf News. Stay with us after the break. Our fishing experts will tell us what's biting in the Gulf, and Brit will have the latest weather details. Hello again. Port Perry's Country Music Festival was set to be a weekend packed with entertainment. The four-day event kicking off this evening, celebrating the sounds of the bush. All country roads lead to Port Piri this weekend. Regional Australia will be showcased through the music of a much-loved genre. An event attracting fans from across the country. The grey nomads have just hit the road in Australia uh, and uh, it doesn't matter where you go, what country music festival. The four day festival lineup is one to impress. This year drawing in musicians from all four corners of Australia and even New Zealand. We've got some of Australia's best talent here this weekend. I mean Peter Code and the Code Sisters and Jim Hermel They've been uh, spent a lot of time in America. The organisers saying it's all about bringing a unique experience to Mid-North music fans. I really like live music and I really enjoy watching people enjoy themselves and they do enjoy themselves when they come to our show. And while the show has shrunk in size over the years, the love of the music lives on, with the event finding a new home in a more intimate venue. It's just a big genre and, uh, oh yeah, it'll never die. Dominic Beaton, 7, Spencer Golf News. If you've ever wanted to be a pilot, there's now a chance to do so in Broken Hill. The local model flying club is offering free lessons for those feeling the need for speed. From takeoff to touching down, it's a free and easy hobby to learn. They may get an interest in flying them, um, and yeah, so we so we bought this aircraft uh, to give people a go when they come out. Greg Pope has been a member of the Broken Hill Model Flying Club for over 30 years. His passion began when his parents bought him a small plastic plane. You can spend as little or as much as you like. Um, some of the guys out there just fly, fly the little foam aircraft, um, I fly the helis and the drones. The club meets every weekend, piloting different aircraft from their base on the edge of town. Greg is hoping the purchase of a new training plane will entice locals to have a go and channel their inner maverick. The, the planes are reasonably easily, easy to fly after a few lessons. Um, helicopters are a bit harder, um, the drones are very easy. Don't be worried about crashing, the instructors will also be in control of the plane. For more information, contact their Facebook page. Patrick Reinke, 7 Spencer Gulf News. Time to check what fish are biting in the Gulf. Here's our experts with their tips. G'day and welcome to this week's fishing tips from Port Augusta, Jewel North. Well, it's starting to heat up again. The crabs are starting to get a little bit bigger, but surprisingly a little bit deeper as well. Try those middle banks, just come off of them in about 30 feet of water, and try the nets, sort of the top and the bottom of the tides there, because the tide flows are quite strong. Uh, lots of snook around at the moment, around the middle banks, and also if you're trying up in the trees, uh, trolling, you'll get some nice salmon. That's all we've got from the Jewel of the North. 
during the weekend we've seen some people that were brave enough to have a go at some yellowfin whiting and did actually achieve some. So I guess the land-based fishing with this little bit of heat is coming back online, so you should have a crack at that. Talawi, Barrows Beach and all those sort of places. And also if you wanted to head a bit further north, a bit further south, sorry, you could find some around the Wallaroo area. When we're looking at blue swimmer crabs, we've been talking about those for the last couple of weeks. They're big in size, Port Augusta is the tip, so if you want to run around and have a shot, I think you'll do well. Hi, Whalers Fishing Report this week. Unfortunately, last week the weather was absolutely terrible, so not many boats did get out. Those that did brave brave the weather did get amongst just a few King George whiting. Um, this week the weather and tide's looking great, definitely worthwhile getting out in front of Mount Young, there should be some really nice size King George whiting. Hot tip, fish the deeper water, blue summer crabs should be starting to move in again. Um, there will be a lot of crabs, so sift through those sizes and pick the better ones and you should be all good. G'day and welcome to this week's Fishing Tips from Port Lincoln. The salmon have been going really well down along the south coast at the moment. Uh, there's been some great fish between Sleaford and Wanna. Uh, the squid have been doing okay around the bay. Um, your town jetties and stuff in the afternoons have been doing alright, but the squid numbers have been down a little bit this season. Uh, also offshore, the Nanagai have been going really well down the passage. There's been some more mixed in with them as well, and a few Samson fish down there too. That's about it for this week. We'll see you again next week. And with a look at the latest in the weather, here's Britt. Good evening. It's been a mostly sunny day with maximums sitting around 3 degrees above average. Port Augusta reached a top of 26 degrees, Port Perry 25, Wyala 23, Broken Hill 22, Adelaide 20, Port Lincoln 18. Looking to the satellite now and we can see today's clear skies under a high pressure system. Moving ahead to tomorrow and we'll start with the Gulf waters, southeasterly winds tending southwesterly at 15 to 20 knots with seas around one and a half metres and the sun will rise at 6.45 in the morning. We can expect bright and sunny conditions about the region tomorrow, Woodnut looking at a max of 27 degrees, Port Augusta and Corn both 26, Port Pirie 25, Wyala and Kadena both 23, Broken Hill 22, Cleve and Adelaide 21, Coffin Bay and Clare both 20, Port Lincoln 18 degrees. Further ahead to the weekend now with partly cloudy conditions expected at Port Lincoln, maximums moving into the low 20s. Cleve with a sunny day on Saturday, an expected top of 26 degrees, partly cloudy Sunday and Monday. Woodner expected to reach 30 on Saturday, also sunny, looking fine and partly cloudy on Sunday. Wyala, Port Augusta and Kadena all expecting sunny conditions on Saturday, fine and partly cloudy Sunday and Monday. Maximums creeping up into the late 20s at Wyala, crossing back into the early 30s at Port Augusta. The pattern continues at Port Piri, Clare and Broken Hill, sunny on Saturday, partly cloudy Sunday and into next week. Maximums reaching the late 20s. So there you have it, John. Looks like things are about to start warming up again. <laughs> Sounds like good weather for a day at the beach. Thanks, Britt. And that's the local news this Thursday evening. Thanks so much for joining us. I'll have some updates later in the evening, but until then, have a lovely evening's viewing here on 7. On behalf of the team, it's good night.